Hello everyone, Milky Way Matthew here. Welcome back to the vlog. It's been a whole week, so that feels strange. I hope you're doing well. I, as you can see, I'm in the kitchen again. So um, I'm gonna be making a little treat today. Um, and I don't know if this is gonna become like a normal thing where I just like vlog while I'm in the kitchen. I don't know if that's gonna be my thing, but it was, that's what's worked out. I think it's because the last today and last Thursday, last Thursday was Christmas Eve, today's New Year's Eve, so it's still kind of like, you know, trying to get things ready, um, having uh, gatherings with friends in my COVID bubble. So um, I've got folks coming over here tonight for a little get together and, um, but that's not what I'm making. I'm just making a treat for myself because for a long time I've been wanting chocolate pudding. So um, when I was at the store I think two times ago, one of the chocolate pudding aisle, not the aisle, just the aisle where there's not a whole aisle of chocolate pudding, but there's an aisle that has chocolate pudding. And I went a little crazy. So um, I'm gonna be making a couple different kinds of chocolate pudding while, while we chat. Obviously, I got um, Jello chocolate pudding. That's like um, what I eat growing up. It also, this is all instant, which when I told Pothology that I got these puddings and that they were all instant, he was like, have you never had real pudding, stovetop pudding? And I was like, no. He's like, oh, what's wrong with you? So anyway. But I'm making instant because, you know, that's going to be the easiest thing. I'm not going to, okay, so I have four different kinds. I'm not going to be making all four today. So I might do two today and then another time I'll do two and report to you on. Because I just like, I don't want that much chocolate pudding in my house. And also like at some point I'll get really tired of it. Um, so part of me, okay, so let me just, so I've got the Jello. Then I have York. And this is dark chocolate peppermint pudding. Can be used for pie filling, obviously any of these can. Um, but that's interesting because I love mint and chocolate. I like York patties okay, but I just love mint and chocolate. So that stood out to me. Um, and then Sonic, what? I want to know at what point Sonic said, let's go into the chocolate pudding business. That would have been such an interesting conversation because I don't think they, it's like they have pudding at their place. So I'm really, really confused by this, but also I'm like, okay, I would try that. I'm guessing it's probably just like very basic and they just slap the Sonic on there. It was probably a licensing deal. Because, like, the only reason I bought that is because it said Sonic, right? So, I'm, I'm the problem. The last one I got um, was Godiva. Look at that. It's, like, gold. It's shiny. Um, Belgium, 1926 is Godiva. Um, dark chocolate um, pudding. So, I'm, I'm going to pick two today. And I kind of want to put... I kind of want to put these two up against each other and see which one I like better. So um, there's, these will these will go head to head today. So those are the two puddings that I'm gonna make. Let me see, I did buy some, I never have dairy milk on hand um, because I cannot drink that. It just grosses me out. But yeah, basically all you need is, also I just realized that this requires me to use the mixer, which is extremely loud. So it's kind of, uh, that's kind of funny. Um, what, are, where are the directions? Okay. Yeah, so all it requires is cold milk. So it's very easy. Um, yeah, so hey, if you're not, haven't had anything to drink in a while, take this opportunity. Bring your shoulders down away from your ears. Take a deep breath. Let's, let's hydrate. It's a little thirsty thirsty as they say. I also want to share with you um, some of my Christmas gifts. I'll do that as we make pudding. 
So let me start gathering the things that I need. I've got the milk. And the bowls that I'm going to use are the bowls that my mother used to make chocolate pudding in. So that's kind of fun. It's the, I mean, obviously the multi-purpose bowls, but um, so I'm going to use this one and this one, the two bigger ones. I know that those are like huge and kind of unnecessarily large, but I also know that it can get splattering if your walls aren't high enough up. Let me grab my beaters. So, ah, where are they? Wrong drawer. So I hope you had a nice Christmas. I know, um, you know, obviously it was a very different one, a different sort of Christmas for most of us. Um, I did not see family, but I was with some friends here in my neighborhood and it was actually a really, really special, lovely Christmas. Um, and we had a really a really nice time together on Christmas Eve, and I stayed the night there on Christmas Eve, and then we spent all day on Christmas together, of Christmas. You know what I do? Um, let me give you an update. I do still have some, remember last time I was making those chocolate covered orange slices? Well, I still have some. Um, and so that one's not very, pretty but I'll show it to you anyhow so this is what how they turned out there you have it folks I was gonna eat it but you know I don't really want to eat it right now so I'm just gonna set it aside um how were they you ask you know they were fine it was fun I actually really really enjoyed making them um I've eaten I think two so I had like if you watched last week you see how many slices I had so I had like I made five oranges worth, um, so that was way too many, first of all. So I think next time I would just do two oranges. Um, I'm gonna use way less sugar. I don't, um, I, I want, I would buy, the Care Care oranges were really good. They're sweet and they're beautiful, but I think for those, you really want the tartness of the orange. So I would actually go for um, just a regular navel orange. And, um, yeah, and then I would, I would not, I got that, I don't did I show you the chocolate that I used? I got that, this Giardelli melting chocolate. I used a dark one on the oranges. This is milk chocolate. Um, this was way too sweet for that. So I think I would just get like, uh, uh, some dark chocolate, some really, really dark chocolate and melt that down um, in a double boiler instead of using the those chips because it was just way way too sweet so uh, I'll probably do it again next year also probably what I will do is um, once I candy the oranges and let them dry which I think what I will do next time is I will candy them like two days in advance and let them dry for a couple of days. And then when they're round, I'll cut them in half and then in halves there. So they're like little kind of triangles. And then I'll dip those triangles in half the triangle in chocolate on both sides. So it'll be like, it'll look like two little triangles, one covered in chocolate, one still with the orange. And that would be really cute and pretty and just bite size because it was just way too much to eat a whole slice but they were good it's very festive i think they're pretty it's something special so i will likely make them again next christmas if i remember so let's get these oh that's the wrong puddings <laughs> i better put those in the cupboard up here now before i actually mess around here so i'm going to put the jello pudding in one What am I gonna do with all this chocolate pudding? I don't know. I guess I'll eat it. I'll share it with 
I'll share it with people. Because it's too much pudding for one one guy like me, even though I like pudding. Actually, it probably it really isn't going to be that much pudding now that I think about it. But Okay, now don't... It would have been interesting because the packages are exactly the same. It would have been interesting if I had mixed them up and then made them and see if I could tell which was which. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, speaking of laughing, I've been laughing a lot because um, my friend Jack convinced me to watch this little show called On Cinema at the Cinema. And if you've been watching the vlog here, you know. I love movies. I need a measuring cup. Um, so you know that I love movies. And this is a, I think it's a, like, a, it was on Adult Swim maybe, but it's, okay, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know any of this before I started watching it. But, um, hold on, one, Two cups here, one, two cups there. What if this is like so loud you can't hear me? This is going to be a really not quality. I don't know, can you even hear me? That's still on low. I'm supposed to do this for five minutes. Maybe what I need to do. I don't know. I hope you'll be able to hear me. So, on cinema at the cinema. I'm getting splashed with pudding in the face. Woo! It's going everywhere. Friends. Friends, this is bad. I need to scrape the edges down because a lot of the powders got splushed up and isn't getting mixed in well. Um, something that's very nostalgic for me is remembering when my mom would make chocolate pudding and she would let us lick the beaters, which was this exact, I mean, you might be able to tell that this isn't exactly new, but this is exactly the equipment my mom would have been using um, to make us pudding. Um, what bad content. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Welcome to the galaxy through my eyes. Today is chocolate pudding day. So, <laughs> I'm realizing how bad of an idea this was. Anyhow, also I have no idea when I started doing this. 1.33. It's 1.33 p.m. on, I didn't say the date. Today is Thursday, December 31st. It's the last day of 2020. That's crazy, people. Okay. So, on Cinema at the Cinema, I think it was originally aired on Adult Swim, maybe, which I don't, I'm gonna be honest with you right now, I don't understand what Adult Swim is. I don't know if it's like a channel or a website or a show. I don't really understand because, so anyway, that doesn't matter. Ignore my ignorance. Um, but basically, basically, on Cinema at the Cinema is Tim Heidecker, which when I mentioned this to Michael, he looked he looked it up, he's like, oh, you're watching Tim Heidecker? And apparently Tim Heidecker is like a big deal in kind of comedy, especially made for the, the comedic sensibilities of like my generation maybe, or what really informed the comedic sensibilities of my generation. Um, anyhow, so, the premise of this show is, it's like these little webisodes, it's a, and they say it's a, it's a web series where they talk about the movies that are coming out over the weekend, and they review them, um, but these two guys are super awkward, and they, like, set themselves up as, like, movie experts, but... They don't actually know that much about movies and their opinions on movies 
um, like like Tim Heidecker's favorite movie of 2013, which is when the show started. His favorite movie of the year was Jack Reacher, and he predicted that it was going to win Best Picture. I don't know if that means anything to you, but that's very funny to me. So I've been loving, loving, loving watching that. Um, and, like, I can't stop. I can't stop. They're so funny, and they're just these little eight-minute episodes. So that's been, like, last night I laughed so hard I cried. It was, it was great. Actually, last night... When I laughed so hard I cried, it was right after I had cried um, out of deep, deep emotion because um, I watched a movie that appeared on a bunch of people's lists for the year. I think it was for, 28, for, no, for 2020, not 2019, but the movie might have been released in 2019. I'm not, I, can't, I can't really tell. And it, that's all, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Anyway. Sometimes it's hard to tell when it's an international film, and you know, so I gotta figure out exactly what year its official release was. Here we go. Um, but what time is it? We've only been going three minutes, two more minutes on this batch. So, um, I watched this movie called Baby Teeth. And it was one of the saddest movies I've watched in a while. Um, actually, like, the first half of it, I was really having a hard time caring. And then by the end, I was really, really overwhelmed with emotion. And it, it truly won me over. Um, the reason I was having a hard time enjoying it was because... There was no one in the movie who was, like, healthy or making good choices for the people they love. And, and part of that was because of addiction and mental illness, but that really just, that sense of hopelessness really makes me very sad. So it was hard to enjoy that. I think it was done well but by the end oh my goodness um if you don't like dramas or just movies that are maybe not fun i wouldn't recommend it but if you're looking for a movie that's really well made um i would recommend it so it stars uh, eliza scanlon is that her name uh, who played Beth in Little Women last year, which was uh, my number, number, ooh, what was it? Number one or maybe number, might have been my number one movie. Of, I think it is. If you look at my official list, I think you would, I think it would show that Little Women was my number one movie of 2019. Though I think, I've watched, okay, I've watched Knives Out and um, we can stop, we can stop that match. I've watched Knives Out and Jojo Rabbit more times than I can count. And the truth is of those two movies, they're, they get better every time you watch them. Um, if you've not watched Knives Out, if you've not watched Jojo Rabbit, um, oh my goodness, I cannot recommend them highly enough. They are brilliantly made, some of the most compassionate human movies, and they're both hilarious and a ton of fun to boot. So, what's not to like? One down, one to go, kids. Here we are. So, there's one bowl of pudding. I feel like I should rinse, rinse these beaters before I start doing it in this other bowl, but I don't think I'm going to be able to tell. To, I don't, my, uh, I'm not that much of a pudding connoisseur. So, here goes nothing. I feel like I can already tell that the Godiva is a dark chocolate. It has a much darker color than the Jell-O chocolate pudding. 
than the Jello chocolate pudding one. Just scraping my edges here. Um, I will use a different silicon spatula. Um, one of, I, you know, I don't actually spend a ton of time on YouTube, I'm gonna be honest, and I don't like, I don't know a lot of YouTubers, but one YouTuber that I really like, which I actually, I, I have not watched her in years, I don't know if she's still on, but back when I was like in grad school, uh, the first time around, <laughs> I was first in grad school, I really, really liked her YouTube channel. It was called Cooking with Plants with Anya. And Anya is a lady in Australia and she's um, a vegan and she cooks vegan food. And it's a great channel. And she would always say, you just grab your silicone spatula and mix it up. So um, whenever I say silicone spatula, or whenever I, I say spatula, truly, I always think of Anya cooking with plants. I hope she's doing well. Um, so, um, yeah. But anyway, Baby Teeth stars Eliza Scantlin and Ben Mendelsohn, who um, has been in many things, Ready Player One, Rogue One. Oh, I just realized those both end in one. And a lot of other more um, high-class sort of stuff. But a couple blockbusters there. I would say he definitely um, is he's a good actor. I feel like I'm on, on cinema right now. Um, he's a good actor. And he kind of, yeah, he kind of had a moment where he was becoming really popular. I mean, so, you know, I think I heard something about him and something else he's going to do, but I don't know. This will be it. Because here's the truth. I do not watch these vlogs before I post them. So I will have no idea if you can hear me. So if you can hear me, comment down below. I can hear you. If you cannot hear me, and you don't know what I'm saying, hopefully you have already turned this off and you're not giving your time to it. But thank you for being here. I forgot to look at the clock. I bet we've been doing this one two minutes at least. So we'll get it another three minutes. is a much bigger bowl and so it kind of all is just spreading out onto the sides so I need to use my silicon spatula and scrape it all down into the center um, but it's already looking to be a good put I'm excited about this I love ice cold pudding which is interesting because again Michael was like you've never had warm pudding which I'm not opposed to that I just I love ice cold pudding but who doesn't? Um, yeah, so last night I watched that movie, was watching some on cinema afterwards to kind of get out of that dark place that Baby Teeth left me in. It actually did not end in a dark place, it just ended in a very heavy place. Um, movie for everyone. We'll just say that. But for some people. You know what? I think I'm calling it. I think that's good. I think that one's good. It looks done. If I'm going to be honest with you. And why wouldn't I be? So yeah, a couple of good bowls of pudding here. And now, you know what? The only thing to do is to taste these. Um, first, I want to tell you about some Christmas presents, namely this Baby Yoda shirt that my mom got me. Very, very cute. I feel like this right here names so much of my life. Um, I also got this little jacket, this L.L. Bean jacket for my friends. It's great. I've been wearing it like every day. It's so warm. Um, I love the color. Yeah, it's it literally just feels like I'm wearing a hug because it's like fleece inside. So, oh, whoo, soft and cozy, I tell you. Um, oh, 
another very, very, very exciting Christmas gift that I got was a gift of spices that I was almost out of. And this is one of my favorite um, right here. Gourmet Collection Kickin' Chicken Finger Lickin'. I don't know if you can see because of the light. Kick, uh, Kickin' Chicken Finger Lickin' Spice Blend. I found this at Marshall's one time, and I got one. And I didn't use it for much, very often, but then I started using it on chicken. Huh, who knew? And I was like, wow, that's good. And every time I just I would use it, it just would get better and better, and I would like it more and more. And I was using it with my friends over the summer whenever we would eat chicken and in the fall too I guess and oh my goodness we just came to love it so much it was it was our go-to for for chicken and I was almost out and here's the thing to buy this like on Amazon or online it was like I don't know it was something ridiculous like 12 or 18 dollars for this jar well my friend found some while she was out and so she got me two of these for Christmas. So this will last me, these two will last me a good long while. But if you ever are at a Marshall's or a TJ Maxx or something like that, and they, where they have spices, and if they have gourmet collection there, keep your eye peeled for chicken, chicken finger licking. Some other ones of theirs that I have that I do like um, is this roasted garlic, rosemary, and sea salt spice blend. This is one, this one's really good. I wouldn't use a lot of it, just a little. Um, this one I haven't had as long in it, so I haven't used it as much, but I do like it. It's um, Fisherman's Seafood Spectacular, um, so that would be great on, like, you know, tilapia just to give it a little life. And then this one is good. Um, also, I think I put this on chicken, but I think, um, I'm not sure if there's salt in it, to be honest. Yeah, there's not which I didn't realize at the time. So you would want to add salt. It's a uh, garlic bread. Um, and so it's, it's really nice. I want to make garlic bread with it sometime, but I haven't yet. So I do like those gourmet collection ones. They're really good. Another thing, this is not Christmas. I'm just showing you everything I have over. Another thing to keep your eye peeled for at Marshall's is some white truffle oil. Um, I think it just it gives us something a little extra special when you're dressing something or if you're going to roast some veggies, it just gives it a, a depth. Um, and, uh, you know, Marshall's is a good place to find stuff like that. So let me grab, um, I'm going to, I'm going to take a trip down memory lane here. I'm in my utensil drawer. And I'll be right with you. Let's, here we go. I'm grabbing two spoons. I can taste each one. These are spoons from my childhood as well. They look probably look really gross. Um, but they have like all of the Kellogg's characters from the cereal on them. These were our cereal spoons. And I, I, I've used these spoons probably millions of times. No joke. Um, so I'm going to start with the Jell-O chocolate pudding. Here we go. I haven't had, I've not had chocolate pudding in years. This is long awaited. Oh my goodness. Oh. That takes me down memory lane. Mmm. That's good. That's very good. Okay. Let me take a drink of water. Here we go. Godiva. Dark chocolate. It's very different. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on, I gotta put a little bit of this into this spoon so I can taste the difference. I think the Jello one is way sweeter. That reminds me of something. There's a bit of darkness. There's a bit of 
a bit of bitterness in the Godiva dark chocolate, but it's not, it's still an instant chocolate pudding. You know what I mean? It's not like um, decadent. Hey, those were both, what a treat. That's great. I look forward to having some more of those in the near future. Um, I wish I could share them with you. Trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I will, uh, confession. I did not do a very good job uh, with my little book of writing things down to share with you. Um, in fact, I literally did not write a single thing in here since last Thursday. Um, so that's, I'm just going to be upfront and honest with you. And I think that is largely because I was, um, it was, you know, a long holiday weekend. So I was totally out of routine, as I'm sure many of us were. Um, and yeah, it, so it was just a, it was an odd time. Um, so yeah, I was, um, I was, I was doing well. It was a good week. Um, we played a lot of games, watched some good Christmas movies, watched White Christmas, watched Elf. Um, yeah, so had some, had some really nice time with friends, connecting with family online. Um, and, uh, it was, it was a good week. It was a good week. But I did not get anything written down in my book. Um, so... I'll try to do better at that, um, but I think everything was just kind of going so quickly I didn't want to miss being present. You know how that is, right? So I'm very, very happy to be standing here with two bowls of pudding. If you're still watching this, um, thank you. I so, so appreciate um, you sharing these moments with me. I think that's all for today. I'm going to... Um, Put these into some smaller um, glass containers that I can put in the fridge and enjoy them throughout the week. And um, I will I will attempt to do, to do better with my book this week so I can give you uh, a more thorough rundown of my week like I did last time. But I think I got to hit all the major points. I mean, Christmas was a big deal. Um, and then it was just be a lot of being lazy. And then the past few days getting back into routine has been um, really, really nice. And, oh, I should share with you my New Year's resolutions. They're on my phone. Oh my goodness, how am I gonna do this? Okay, so here's what I'll say. Um, I have a new year, one of my New Year's resolutions, which I don't usually do this, this is kind of weird, but it's kind of like, if there's any time to like do something different, it's going into 2021. Um, I wanna get rid of one thing every day during 2021. And that's just an effort to declutter my life. I have so much stuff like from my childhood. As you can see, I have my childhood spoons and everything. So um, my, yeah, my one resolution is to just get rid of one thing every day and work on simplifying and decluttering. So that's one thing I wanna do. And um, then another resolution is to spend, to give more time to, um, I, I, intentionally change that because we give away our time it's not something we spend time is not a currency it's a gift so we give time to things i want to give more time to reading and writing and um so that will just mean i need to be intentional and in setting times for those things and choosing to give time to that and prioritizing that um so yeah i'm i'm um, considering what that will look like and I'll keep you posted on that and then uh, then I also kind of set I think I have maybe a couple others but I can't remember um, and then I set like a, a couple goals for myself which both have to do um, which all have to do with writing so my goals for this year which are I think different than resolutions resolutions I see as like being intentional about the daily daily kind of life stuff and uh, a goal is something that um, for me is more kind of like a one-time sort of thing. But maybe not. I don't know. That's just how I organized it in my brain. So take it or leave it. So the goals that I've set for myself 
um, in 2021 are to, um, to, to one, to be persistent in seeking publishing for the book that I'm wrapping up. Um, and that's a very tricky world that I know very little about. And um, so to not kind of just give up when it gets hard, but to be persistent in that. So that's goal number one. Goal number two is, and this is kind of a crazy goal, but it goes along with my resolution to spend more time writing. Uh, my second goal is that I would like to finish in the calendar year of 21, I would like to finish a first draft of the second writing project that I have outlined for myself. And it's definitely um, one that I think is probably a, it's a lot more um, structured and lengthy than the last one that I did. So um, the last one was, uh, as I said, just kind of like a collection of essays. So it could be kind of whatever I wanted it to be. And this one is more of a whole thought throughout the whole piece. And so um, that'll be a challenge, but I want to get a first draft of that done. So that's my second goal. And my third goal um, is similar and then it has to do with creativity and writing, but I would like um, over the summer um, to make a short film. And this is something I've wanted to do for a long time, have worked on different projects, but have never just kind of said, okay, I'm doing it no matter what. And I want to just say, I'm going to do it no matter what. And to the point where I don't care if it's good. I don't care uh, what it is. I just want to do it and have my have one done. Um, and if I do, I'll make sure if I'm, um, you know, still living in YouTube world here with y'all, I will make sure you know where you can check that out and all that. But yeah, those are my three goals. So they're really oriented around creativity and time and all that. So I hope you have a very, very, very happy new year and um, get the opportunity to um, just feel connected to others, connected to yourself. And so let me say this, if no one has said this to you today, you are loved and you are valuable and you are needed. You're worthy of breath, you're worthy of sighing, you're worthy of keeping your shoulders down away from your ears. You're worthy of staying hydrated to life and love and another new year. And you're worthy of a rest, absolutely. And you're worthy of receiving all those things as um, an act of love. Um, thank you again for spending these moments with me. I'm thankful that this end of 2021 has brought us together here in the interwebs. And I look forward to seeing you in 2021. From I just got putting all over my hand as I'm trying to wrap up this um, vlog. Peace. And that, my friends... If that's not emblematic of 2020, I don't know what is. But peace. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.